Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. All right, so this is a special request um, and I take them all the time. So if you have one for yourself, please email me, um, post a comment, just let me know on any of the accounts. If you wanna email, it's Anne at theuselesscrafter.com or you can post on any one of my um, social media accounts. So Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. All right, so this, like I said, is a special request. I wanna make this really big. Um, one of the things about this image that makes it difficult is that usually our black is just our background. But in this case, our black is also part of the dress here, the dre on all the dresses. Um, it's also part of the shoe as well as her hair. So it makes it difficult because like I said, when it's just our black background, then we can have little seams in them because they're so minimal and all the colors sit on top and everything looks great, right? But here black plays such a big part of the of the image that I wanna say even before working on the project that I would probably use black glitter cardstock. Um, and I usually only do that when black is a big part of the file, like Spider-Man, or if you follow any of my other projects, uh, Snow White or Princess Jasmine, because the hair is black and it's such a big part of it, that I like to use black glitter cardstock because you don't see the seams. Um, so that's what I would use. I would then, I would actually use glitter cardstock for all the colors, except maybe white. White, I might just use regular white cardstock or white glitter cardstock. It, I'm, I could go either way on that one. But for the eyes, definitely glitter cardstock. Um, and for the, maybe her blonde hair, she doesn't need to have glitter cardstock, it's up to you. Um, but the black glitter cardstock will hide the seams. Everything else will be seamless. So even if you decide to not use, excuse me, something just like flew into my eye. Um, if you only use black glitter cardstock and everything else is regular cardstock, this will still look so beautiful because like I said, everything else, when we do this piece will probably, I would say would be seamless. So, all right, let's start working on this file. First thing is I would ungroup it. I see that we have this, we don't need this because when I'm looking over here, here's our solid black background. So we don't need that at all. So I'm tempted to just delete this. All right, so let's see this one. I'm gonna group it for now because I want to be able to move everything and uh, stretch it out. So this is definitely wider than it is long. So in this case, normally I type in 30 for the height, but let's do 30 for the width and see what, what it looks like. And then let's make this smaller so we can kind of see it. So at 30 inches, it's 19 inches high. Um, let's do this at 40 inches and see what we have. So at 40 inches, it's 24 here. Let's see if we want to do, well, let's ungroup it for a second and see if we can actually make it bigger because it's three, um, girls, I feel like, you know, you can do it more than the 30, but let's look at the skin color. I want to make sure that these pieces are in no way do we need to slice them. So here's our skin. Let's put a contour really quickly and let's hide all. Let's, when this is at 680%, just click on the, where the numbers are, click on it and it drops to 100%. So it makes it easier to see. So this is one of the faces. I just wanna, I did hide all contours and then I wanna see just this face. So this face is nine inches by eight. So, okay, so it's good. We, we don't need to slice that. So let's hide all, show all to bring it all back. So there are all our faces. So I feel like right now it's 40. Let's go up to 44 inches and see what we have. So at 44, it's 27. Mm, what the heck? Let's do it, right? Okay, so we're going to do this at 44 inches just because. Um, let's duplicate it and flatten. And the reason why is this will give us 
a cut, um, a print and cut. And I just want to kind of keep this up here so I'm reminded of what the real picture looks like as we ungroup everything. Okay. Okay. So here, let's just move everything over. These are all the eyes and the shoes and all that good stuff. So there's going to be a lot of ungrouping that we're going to need to do. Go to shapes and let's bring in a square. And let's move over here and start ungrouping this stuff. So all the white pieces um, end up being 33 inches by 15. So obviously we can't cut it as is. We need to start ungrouping these things. And we can't just click on ungroup. They're all welded together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our square. We're going to slice apart each one of these things. So I would keep these two together because there's a lot of white here. I would just do this and grab that. When you're slicing, you can only slice two things at one time. So my white is one thing and my square is one thing. So I'm gonna grab those two, that's two, and we're gonna slice. And it doesn't matter that my square is sitting over this. My cursor did not pick up anything past this square. So if you remember, I when I grabbed my cursor, it was only like this, okay? All right, so here's our first piece. You can get rid of the slice results. And here's our, our little piece. It's now, this is 3.8 by 2.2, right? So we got to go in. This is going to be a lot of work because it's three. Just keep in mind, first of all, we're doing it 44 inches, so we're making it really big. And you also have three items, three girls. So there's a lot of, just a lot of moving parts, okay? So again, I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to slice. So we're just slicing things. Oh shoot, that was bad because I accidentally took up this eye. So let me undo that. And that was a good mistake to make. I don't say so myself. Okay, so we might wanna turn this square because when I did this, I wanted to make sure nothing's in here, but I got some of the eye. So you can always do this and get a clean space. You wanna make sure whatever you're slicing out is completely covered by the square and nothing else is covered by the square within the white pieces. So I'm gonna do this and slice. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way. So now we have two pieces, right? And let's see, can I do that? It looks like I could do that. Oops, okay. I'm gonna grab the square, oops, so take my cursor, grab the square and the white. And you see it's important that my cursor did not pick up the whites on the lower bottom. Because if I did do that, watch, I'm gonna show you now. If I accidentally did this, I'm picking up too many pieces and slice is no longer, it's grayed out, it's no longer available. So you need to make sure when you're slicing, where you start with your cursor that you only pick up two items. So I got those two on this slice. And you see, so I'm slowly of my white pieces picking apart this little thing right here so that we can um, get them all separated. So I can use the same square, right? And I'm gonna now take out these two pieces and look, my square is over this little girl over here. It doesn't matter as long as when I go to pick up the two items, I'm only picking up the white and the square and slice. So you can see my my white is now down to 28 by 15 inches. <laughs> Slowly but surely we're getting it. Okay, so now I'm coming in from this side. I'm gonna grab these two items and slice. And I'm just moving it down here. Now I'm gonna get that last bottom part, grab these two items, slice. And it might be easier at some point just to bring in a new square. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna delete this, we don't need this. Here's our other white piece. And so now we're down to just this piece, 28 by 7.6. So let's bring in our square. Okay, and make it really big. And I'm gonna start slicing away at this. Now I won't do this for all the colors. I'm gonna do it for a few, but not the whole thing because it gets repetitive and I think you get the idea, right? So do that one. Let's get this little circle. Okay. 
or you can watch my video for like two hours. <laughs> All right, so we're almost there with the white. So move our square over. Let's go this way. Slice out that eyeball. So now I just have those two. We're getting there. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Delete the slice results. Oh boy. Design space is slowing down. That's not good. Okay. And bring my square back over. Mm, okay. This, I'm just going to turn over so that I can easily slice out that eye. There we go. All right. So now all my white are in pieces that my Cricut can cut. Okay, it is really slowing down. Okay, let's look at our, our image again. You're gonna need to do the same for the red, although you can keep it like this, but I hate having that wasted space right there. So if you start slicing this out, then you can group it together more efficiently when we go to the Make It, make it page. Um, you're gonna need to do that with all of these pieces. Move it over as well as the orange. Now I wanna show you something with the skin though, um, cause I think it's a little bit more difficult to do. So all these color pieces, you shouldn't have a problem um, slicing it out, all your pieces, okay? So I'm gonna move all that, but I'm gonna work on the face. And let's see, our green, let's move over, okay. Now sometimes I'm gonna scroll down so you can see this. Um, sometimes it's hard to slice when things are super close together. So I'm going to show you an alternative to slicing is you can contour. Okay. So when we're contouring, and this is sort of a lot of pieces, but I'll do it anyway. When you're contouring, however many pieces you want to separate it into, that's the number of copies that you need. So the face is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is nine pieces, okay? So we need nine total copies. So we already have one. Here's two, three, four, five, get nine pieces. I think this is getting so big that design space is slowing down. So I'm not going to do all nine copies, but I'm going to show you how to isolate them. Okay. Click on contour. Click where the number is. So it goes to 100% so you can see everything. Now with contouring, I love contouring. You can either use this here to select and deselect items, or you could use this panel. Okay. But because there's so many pieces, what I like to do is I like to hide all and it leaves everything but one. So it leaves this one face in the middle, okay? But you want this cut out here, so I'm gonna click on it. Let me see if I can get it there. And look what happens to our image. Oh, oops, let me go back. I want that mouth in there. Let's go back to contour, did it not? I thought it got the smile. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. It was clicked. I do want it. Okay. Oh, there's my smile. So there's a cut for the smile. So here's our first piece. Then you go back to the next one and let's get, let's hide all. Then click on the percent sign. We want this face this time because we already got the middle one. We also want the smile and I can't there. Okay, and then, then you need to deselect this one. Okay, so now the only thing selected is this, oh, but the smile is gone. Let me see if I can find that smile, it's this one. Sometimes it's easier to hit on the right-hand side panel. Okay, yep, and there's my left girl with the face. Go up to the next one, whoops. Okay, and go to contour, and you're basically, um, we're isolating one piece at a time, right? So let's hide all and let's do this one over here. I want this one. I don't need this one. Oops, I didn't select this one. 
Okay, I want this one. It's really slowing down. It's like there. Let's see if that works. Okay, I want that one, but I don't need this one. So I'm deselecting that one, and then I want that smile. So let's go down, and it's this one. Okay, get out of it. So you see I'm just isolating piece by piece, and you do that either if it's less steps doing that or if the pieces are too close together and it's too hard to slice it out, that's how I would do it, okay? So I'm going to leave that for now. I'm actually going to delete everything to try to free up the space, to free up design space because um, I think it's slowing down because I have so many pieces to this image, okay? So I'm just going to delete everything. I'm going to show you how to slice the background at this point. It's not even letting me delete. It's really, really slow right now. Come on. Okay, there. I grab all this and delete it. Okay. So we have this image that we know we need to slice because it's 44 inches by 27, right? So let's move it over here. Let's insert our squares. We're basically building a bunch of squares that this can sit on top of so that we can slice out. So our squares, I'm gonna be using 12 by 12 cardstock. So I'm gonna make my squares 11 by 11. Now we could technically make it 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I don't like dealing with half inches. And our image is 44 inches across, which means we need four anyway, right? Four times 11 is 44. So even if we did 11 and a half inches, we still would need four of them. So I didn't lose anything by just going to 11 inches. And same thing with 27, I still need three, um, three rows of that. Three, yeah, three rows of that, <laughs> rows and columns. Um, so what do we need? We need four going four across and we need three. So we need 12 squares total, right? So we're going to start building our squares. So here's our first square. Just put it down somewhere, okay? I'm going to move my face over. We're going to use the position feature. And the reason is because I want to make sure that all 12 squares are flush, not there are no gaps and no overlays um, because I just want to make them flushed. So the, your X coordinate is the one going across and your Y coordinate is the one going down. So I'm going to just round this to the nearest whole number. So 6.33 is going to become 6 and 16.3 is going to become 16. I'm basically telling the program go over 6 units, go down 16 units, and here's a tip of my square. I'm going to duplicate it and put it really close to this one. If I put it really close, I don't have to do any math. I can just go up here and round to the nearest whole number. So 17.3 becomes 17, 16.1 becomes 16. So now I have two perfectly flush squares, okay? So um, I'm gonna grab these two, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna put it really close. And turn that into 28 and turn that into 16. So now I have four perfectly flush squares. And I'll show you the math behind it. So this starts at 6, right? So 6 plus 11 is 17. And there's 17. Plus another 11 is 28. There's 28. Same principle as we build down. So we already have four squares that are flush. So we're going to grab all four. And I grab too much. So actually, let's select the squares by doing this. Go to your right-hand side panel, click on one, hit the shift key, click on the second, the third, and the fourth, okay, and duplicate. So now we have, we're copying all four flush squares, put it close, this becomes six, this becomes 27. I'm going to duplicate again, and I could have duplicated the eight squares and be done with it, but I probably would have picked up the wrong squares, <laughs> picked up an image, so I'm just going to do it four, four at a time. I'm going to change this to 6, change this to 38, and duplicate again. And here's my last row. Put it close. This becomes 6. This becomes 49. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is our print and cut. The reason why I did this is because, so this is 44 inches. Let's make this 44 inches as well. OK, 
Okay, and I'm gonna grab these two items and make them sit on top of each other. Okay, so go to align, click center, and group it for now just so that they move together. And the reason why I do that is so that when I put this image on top here, I can see what where my slicing is gonna happen. And that's why I do that. Um, so I wanna see if when I'm slicing right here, I probably don't wanna slice that because look, all this black right here is gonna show this seam. Um, so when you're looking to see where you wanna cut it, the other thing you don't want to happen is, let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Look at where her, the, the black girl, her hair, this would slice off right here and you would just have a little piece hanging out by itself. You don't want that. You want big pieces so that when we're taping this together and putting it together, we have big pieces that are easy to keep track of, easy to cut, and easy to put together. So I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see this. Um, all right, so let's move this and see if we have a better place to cut. So this is not bad. This cuts through the red. That means the red's gonna sit on top of the seams there. You have a little cut here. Oh. Now the seams won't matter as much because remember we're doing um, we're doing black glitter cardstock. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit because I'm okay. Um, I'm gonna move it down because I, let's see, this is cutting through right there. Move it down just a little bit. Okay, I think we're good here. I think it's, we're slicing big pieces, easy to manage. All right, so let's ungroup this image, get rid of our print and cut because we don't need it. Now we're going to start slicing. Oh, you know what? This little hair right here. Let me move it down just a little bit. Oh, I see. Oops. Now all the feet are going to be cut off. All right, let me move this down a little bit. Okay, I think we're good there. All right, so let's start slicing this guy. Um... Let's get rid of all the squares that don't have anything. Okay, so delete that, delete that. Okay, now we're gonna slice one square at a time. So here's this and the image slice. Slice. So you can see I'm just making my way around this image. and slicing one square at a time. Now it's gonna be hard to get into the middle of that square, so we're gonna clean up a little bit in a second. So I'm just slicing all the way around here. All right, so we can delete all these items. So what, what I like to do is I like to move everything over, but keep it in order. So those two ears I'm gonna put right here, or they're not ears, they were part of our hair. This piece goes over here somewhere. And because this is a lot of pieces, I do want to do this so that when I pull this piece off, I know exactly where it goes. Um, and so now this over here, though, these are all slice results that we don't need. So we could just delete that. And we can continue slicing. Slice that. Slice this, and then I would just move it over. So this was here, this is here, and you can move this over. You see, it gets, it's hard to piece this together. I, I'm not a puzzle person, so that's why this helps me. I move this all the way over. Okay, and the slice results, we don't need any of that. So just grab it and delete it. Let's see what else we have now. All right, so let's slice this. Slice this. And I think we have all our pieces.
And then this we can just delete. All right, so let's look to see what we have over here. Now we have pieces that we can cut on the Cricut. And then when you pull it off, you're going to piece all these together. And it will be flushed. So you shouldn't be able to see the seams, especially because you're using black glitter cardstock. So this goes here. So you can kind of see my pieces are, I, you just want to make sure that you, that this is a map that you can read. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be flush, but just so you know where the pieces go. All right, I think we're done. Um, just let me know how I can help you guys. I hope this was helpful and that you learned a lot. All right, bye guys.